Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. Also, just woke up myself. So today we're going to do something a little different. Rather than me talk too much about my progress, uh, I actually went ahead and uh, wanted to help more of the newer players out who are really kind of at the mapping stage, kind of, right? Like you finish the campaign, you're getting into maps, you're generating a little bit of currency, and you don't really know what to do with it. Now, before I get started, I do want to state that most of this information, in fact, actually pretty much all of this information can be found on my Wikipedia, uh, whether you're looking at the RF FAQ or the uh, RF crafting page, which will load everything, my internet shit, so it's not loading, so don't mind me. Um, but instead, for people who need a more visual approach, I'm going to go ahead and break that down for you guys in this video pretty much right now. So with that being said, let's get started. First off, I'm going to just go clear a map. Uh, don't expect to be, you know, clearing like this uh, with the gear I'm showing you. It's just for the people who are tracking the progress updates. I want to go ahead and keep you guys updated. Uh, so essentially what I have done is I fit in a medium cluster jewel, which has fan the flames flow of life. And I took avatar of fire uh, to do this. I dropped these points here. So I lost a little bit of single target. The purpose of this current swap is for my Oriath's end. Um, the main thing that this is going to do is it's just giving me a little bit more oomph for the clear um, without me actually having to, uh, like, basically it helps me kind of kill straggler mobs, right? That's pretty much about it. It's a really expensive flask. I would not recommend it in your, like, normal progression, right? This is more of, like, a an endgame chase item for clear. Uh, for example, I could have put that money into an empower and increased my damage by literally 25%. I got like 3 million boss damage with an empower setup. I could go to 4 million uh, by doing the reverse aru on essentially the links from my helmet into my body armor and then vice versa. But yeah, uh, I'm pretty happy with this setup right now. Just for clear mainly, right? Um, definitely going to have to uh, get an empower so that I can do the swap. The main reason on waiting on the empower for the swap is I have all the other awakened gems that are shown in the POB. Uh, and what the empower does is it basically really kind of super juices the fire trap with the gem levels. And now that I have an Oriath's end, I don't really mind if I lose some AoE on my helmet, for example, because I won't be using Awakened Ink AoE, since the Oriath's is going to do majority of the clear, and my Righteous Fire is just more of the trigger for that, if that makes sense. Like, you'll see when I walk next to the shrine, right? The prolifts that are kind of happening here are all the Oriaths. That's not that's not my RF, right? RF doesn't actually have an ignite. Oh yeah, let's actually go do the league mechanic real fast. Where did they go? Where did you go, league mechanic? Sneaky little league mechanic. Now this character can be built more towards an explodey build, right? But right now we're just doing kind of like the bare bone minimum so I can still maintain the thickness, right? Oh shit, he can actually see this now, how nice! Let's just get a nice full charge. Ah, one shot me, come on, do it Chris, one shot me. Oh boy, actually that, ooh, that hurt quite a bit, I don't even know what that was. So the empower swap will give us a lot more single target. Okay, so it's the spider's leap that actually does a lot, that's kind of interesting. I don't know what damage type that is. Physical? Hmm. I don't know. All right, well, that's pretty much about it. We don't need to spend too much time in there. Okay, so now I want to talk about uh, essentially what I was referring to earlier. So let's go ahead and jump right on into that. Now, before I get started, I'm going to give you a nice breakdown of what I bought. Right? So, because most of this is going to be traded for. If you're playing SSF, you can still apply this knowledge. You just can't purchase the items. You got to find them. So, I spent a total of, I think, like, I don't know, 28, 29 chaos. I just did these trades literally 20 minutes ago. Uh, and you should not be looking for the exact same thing that I am showing because of people price fixing and people being lazy and not changing anything. Anything I put here, just add a zero. And all of a sudden, it goes from, you know, 19 chaos or 20 chaos to buy all this to 200 chaos. So these are the things I bought, and we're going to just do a quick little explanation with some knowledge. Okay, so what are you looking for on a scepter? Well, scepters have an implicit of elemental damage. The higher, the better. Void and opal, I believe, are the two best at 40% elemental. However, 
when it comes to purchasing items, um, you might be paying an extra 50 chaos for 14% elemental damage. So what does that mean? That means that that burning damage fracture right there at 34%, I bought this scepter here for uh, five chaos. Um, so this scepter was five chaos. If this was on an opal or void base, it would immediately be like 40 or 50 chaos. Why? Just because it is on a better base for people who want better equipment. But we just want entry level equipment. So what are we going to do? We're going to take this scepter out. I'm going to take three deafening essences of fear. And I'm going to go to my crafting bench. Okay. So now I'm going to click the essence on this. Now, why minion damage? Well, it's a very common question. We take spiritual aid. It is efficient for damage scaling. That is pretty much the bare bones of it. As a damage over time build, we are limited with how we scale. Spiritual aid gives us another way to scale, which converts minion damage into increased damage. More importantly, there is no essence in the game that gives you percent elemental or percent fire damage or percent dot multi. It does not exist. So the most deterministic way of scaling of, of a, essentially putting a high tier modifier on a scepter would be the deafening essence of fear. Now, our goal is to have an open suffix and then the weapon is done. So I'm going to click the essence and guess what? It has an open suffix. I don't care about the physical. Why? Because it's now 26% elemental with 92% increased damage with a fractured 34% burning. And then if you've been doing Jun at all with Betrayal, and if you're not, you could probably get one of your friends uh, to help you with this. Or you can go in game to Global 911 by just literally typing over here slash Global 911 and then joining the global channel. This is our Righteous Fire help channel. Then you're going to craft fire damage over time multiplier. And now that weapon right there has, how much does that have? Like 150% increased damage with 19 multiplier. This weapon in total took me about, I think just about 10 chaos to craft. So that weapon is now completed. All right, next piece. So the amulet, I don't actually think amulets are necessarily worth crafting. You can pick up something like this for literally two chaos. Uh, I believe I spent two chaos, maybe three chaos on this. Ideally, you know, plus one fire gem with some resistance, maybe some life regen. Uh, don't look too crazy for stats. Turquoise amulet is fantastic because of the dex and intelligence base. Onyx amulet is also very good because Onyx has all attribute. Uh, Jade amulet as well is really good in comparison to my amulet, which is poop. It, it's pretty similar, right? Mine just has extra res and dexterity. Now, for an early anoint on your amulet, for people who don't know what anointing is, you get one free, um, essentially notable on the tree. I would recommend Arsonist. With my super late game version, we path to it. Not relevant if you are, you know, in the early stages. It's very cheap. It is green, green, blue oil. I think that's like three chaos. Um, and it gives you 10 fire multi with life regen. Very fantastic pickup. If you're on Legacy of Fury variant, you could also look at Ash, Frost, and Storm and see if that's better for you because effective non-damaging ailments scales really hard on Legacy. Okay, uh, ring. So rings are interesting. You can alternatively just buy rings. You don't have to do this method, um, but say you get a ring with a fracture. So this, this ring was one chaos. You could even buy better fractures, any resistance you want. Um, chaos will be more premium, right? For this instance, uh, I don't know the best way to craft these, so I'm just gonna use anger. Anger gives a little bit of damage, so you can see other jewelry, 20 to 26% uh, fire damage. So every time I hit this topaz ring, it's going to get that fire damage roll. So what are we looking for? Honestly, an open prefix, right? So I click that. It's got fire damage. It's got fire res. I could craft life on this bad boy. It's done. I cannot do Not an amazing game. piece, but how much currency did we spend? Like three chaos, cool. right? That's a good ring. Leave it done. Okay. Apply the same logic to another ring, right? belt slot mortal flesh hands down uh super cheap pickup just a couple of chaos gives absurd regeneration really good life combos extremely well with purity of elements for the increased armor you don't have to worry about replacing this for a long time you can also use fertile catalyst on them but that makes it a lot more expensive and we're talking about the bare bones right now all right boots boots are fun so boots uh interestingly enough i recommended percent increased life regen fracture on gloves and now they're like all 50 chaos each. So let's pivot that. If you don't have Legacy of Fury, get life regen on your boots. Why? Because they costed me 2C. Uh, maybe it was 5C. Really cheap. Either way, really, really cheap. So here's what we're going to do for these. There are these essences called Zeal. They're extremely cheap. Uh, I'm just using Screaming. These roll 25% uh, movement speed every time. So I'm just going to Regal. 
and then I'm going to hit it with this. Okay, so what do we get? I'll show you what we just got. We just got boots with uh, 100 life, with percent life regen, with T2 fire res. And you could now exalt slam for another res. Bam. Boots are finished. Okay, next up, we got a pair of gloves here. These gloves have 28% chaos res. Why did I go for the chaos res fracture? Chaos res is very strong, uh, especially as it builds that run melee. Now, um, you can actually also combo this with taking the armor applies to chaos damage taken from hits. I personally like to wait until later in maps to do this. Um, since chaos is yet again prevalent with the league mechanic, there is no harm in putting three points into faith and steel, two points and then getting this. It's very good for players who want to be more lazy and face tank, which is probably all of us. <laughs> so not a bad pickup, just FYI. Right, so because uh, of the pivot, what I'm gonna go ahead here, uh, because I would normally craft with Chaos Essence, is we're gonna craft with Dexterity Essences. So yet again, I'm gonna Regal, and the reasoning for Regaling is making it rare. If your item's already rare, you don't need to worry about this. Oh look, that actually rolled life. That's actually uh, pretty good. Okay, you could actually kind of like use that and then slam your suffixes, but that's cheating, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and Essence. So every time I use this Essence, it is gonna guarantee hit Dexterity. So why Dexterity? It saves you points on the tree here, and saves you points on the tree here and also uh you need decks for your fire trap and your awakened gems later okay so i'm gonna go ahead and use the essences here and we are hoping for either a life roll prefix or another really good suffix so let's see what we get uh, honestly that's not bad the attack speed affects your shield charge um the life is a hybrid which means you could still craft life let's go again and see what happens um, strength and dexterity with a life roll. This is also not a bad idea because something like this, you could actually, with betrayal, craft plus two level of socketed gems. You could throw your auras in there and your auras are getting plus one. As a juggernaut, scaling your determination is very, very strong. Uh, let's hit it a few more times and just kind of see some other outcomes. Um, so that has dex with lightning res. It's got uh, armor and evasion roll. Um, dex with, that's really shit. Uh, dex with fire res. Uh, Dex Cold Res, again, with the hybrid, so you could craft life, so you get the point, right? Okay, um, let's move into uh, another piece. So, Helmet. Helmet I opted to not craft, and I will explain why, and you could do the exact same philosophy with gloves. You can go ahead and search in PoE Trade, uh, put the little squiggly, and put two level of socketed AoE gems, and you can straight up buy, I bought this for one chaos, plus two socketed gems. Well, why is that a thing? That's because of the betrayal mechanic I talk about a lot. People are unveiling items and just selling them. So this is literally plus two to RF or plus two to fire trap or plus two to your auras if you have something set up. And again, this modifier can also roll on gloves. And for early progression, this is kind of like a five link instead of a four link, right? But something kind of interesting to, uh, to use. And then I believe we have two more pieces. So we've got the shield. Um, the shield I didn't buy because I just picked this up off the ground and identified it, like, literally. So, most important thing on shield, if you are trying to get damage, plus one fire spell gems or percent increased fire. Both, ideally, but that makes it expensive. Uh, honestly, what you can do is you can just buy plus one fire gems and then craft life if it has, like, a resistance. And then you can just do the crucible tree, um, and try to get something like, for example, I got fire damage on mine and I got area of effect. And I'm like, okay, that's... That's not bad. That That's a point on the tree, and that's a point on the tree. So that saves me two skill points, right? Not a bad shield. It's not amazing, but it gets the job done, right? Speaking of which... Oh, yeah, no, no, it's done. Okay, yep, so that's pretty much it for your shields. Again, nothing crazy. If you want to go the more defensive approach, your typical options are always available. Saffle's Frame, um, uh, hold on my brain, uh, Dawnbreaker, and even Rise of the Phoenix, but Rise I would switch off to, to either Saffle's or Dawnbreaker, Probably around yellow maps when damage starts to become a little bit more apparent. Okay, and then last up, probably the most important piece we save for last, is the six link. Now, you have two options here. Number one, you go with a uh, pure, um, sorry, you go with an armor ES base because it is really easy to color for your, um, your righteous fire. Number two, you go with a pure armor base and you go for three red and... Uh, three red, two blue, one green. So basically the exact same thing I have here. The only difference is, is you would drop, this is probably efficacy for you, efficacy with less duration. Less duration works because of the life tap. 
life tap adds the duration tag. Um, so that is one option. It's not nearly as bad to color because you're going for three off color instead of four off color. Now, uh, when it comes to purchasing an armor ES base, you want to buy the highest armor base av uh, available to you, right? So I don't remember if Saints Halberk is. You can just go on Peewee Wiki and you can search armor bases. I was just looking by currency, right? Um, I would not go for a six and glorious plate right away unless they're cheap and you can afford them. Do not spend crazy amounts of currency on one piece of gear when you are progressing your righteous fire build. Spread your currency out and give your character some love, right? Get a little bit of, you know, a little bit of oomph here and there because it goes a long way. So let's let's start with this though. The reason we're not getting a fractured base is because six linking it manually is way more expensive. Buying the six link, I believe I bought this for nine chaos. I could actually probably even scroll up and show you how much I bought it for. Uh, let's see here. You can see me buying the gloves. Um, okay, yeah, I bought this Saints Halberg for nine chaos. So let's go ahead and get started with it. So first thing I'm going to do, and you don't have to do it in this order. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, I am actually just going to scour it, and then I'm going to hit it with the uh, armor scraps. So scoured, armor scraps. Oh, that's the wrong one i misclicked okay so now you have a few options in how you craft this and my website pox.net under crafts will explain this if your chaos res is really bad i would prioritize chaos res personally um you can also go with dread essence dread also works for jewelry for getting flat armor so that is another option um so you can see this would add 150 to 200 and if you go higher on the tier it will add more right uh i'm gonna get started with envy for chaos res so I don't think, okay, yeah, that works, right. So what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for at least, I would say, um, you want to find two to three affixes that are good for you. So for example, this hit Chaos Res, which is guaranteed, and it hit Armor and Energy Shield, and it hit Life. You can't craft anything on it though. And since I spent 9C on the item, I don't wanna only use one Essence unless it's really good. So I'm gonna spend another Essence here. So this hit a good Life Roll, with the chaos roll that's guaranteed it hit the strength suffix which is okay it's not too bad um but it, but still it's not a bad piece and why is it not a bad piece well i could just go ahead and craft flat armor on this and it would be over a thousand armor guaranteed so if i go over here and just put this armor roll it's now 1200 armor and oh, you probably should shit. not use an exalt because again the the price of your gear and exalt is more expensive than this entire piece but if you wanted to, to just get an extra roll, right? You could take an exalt. You could ask Chris Wilson for that blessing. Tell him to give you an awesome, let's see, what would he, what would you want? You could ask for the life regen roll because you already have a life roll. You could ask for a sick resistance. Let's see what we get. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. We hit tier six cold res, whatever. That's not mad. That's, that's a resistance that is usable. So now some really common questions I, I get is how you use uh, Eldritch Currency, and it's really, really easy. So here's how you start. People want Fire Exposure on Gloves, as this is what I recommend. Fire Exposure is with Lesser, uh, this one right here. So you can click this on, basically, until you get Fire Exposure. I don't know if it's cheaper to buy a base with Fire Exposure. That I'm honestly not really sure about. You have to kind of, like, mess around and pay attention to the economy. You can see there I hit Fire, I hit Cold Exposure, Lightning Exposure, um... Cold exposure, again, physical conversion, line. You get the point, though. That's how that works. Uh, I would always recommend, prime example, throwing one Icar on your gear, because if you just saw there, I just used one Eldritch Ember, and I got 16% minion damage. That's basically one point on the tree. That's good. Same thing with the boots, right? Drop Scorch Ground. That's huge. That's a multiplier. Scorch Ground minuses the res by 10%. We just went up, like, super damage, right? Throw another one of these... All right, there. Armor from equipped helmet and gloves. Not a problem. All right, hit up the body armor. Lightning damage. Let's just throw one of these on. Wrath effect. Uh, chance to block attack damage. Whatever. That's not bad. Gain a frenzy charge, right? Uh, let's go for the helmet. Mono reserve. Okay, mono regen per power charge. Doesn't really matter. Uh, cold damage taken. Recoup this life, right? You get the point. You could play around a little bit with these. They're not super expensive, and you typically are buying them in bulk i don't know what that person said i'll have to read it after but hopefully that can help you guys out with some entry level gear progression so you can kind of get started understand where to spend 
your couple of early chaos and don't forget to check out the website faq if you need some more direction uh, i'm pivoting now into the more end game version i actually crafted a body armor from scratch it is freaking awesome i am scared to exalt it because uh i don't want to hit a life regen roll and then i can't take the mastery uh one big tip i would tell you is when you are doing what i'm doing right here you want to make sure you're sticking with bases that have armor or crafting armor on them if it's say a pure energy shield base because of your armor mastery which they now have updated to say elemental res uh, if you're wearing gear without armor in your helmet, body armor, glove, and boot, you are losing one max res. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Sundays. See you guys all tomorrow.